Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in on this week's episode. I'm going to talk to you about, well, the Bitcoin conference. Um, I was there and I'll tell you what I experienced. Um, there was a lot to <laughs> experience, but we shall uh, dig into that. Then also I'm going to dig into my documentary. That is the slow way to say documentary. Um. Uh. Yeah. Searching for Satoshi. Get in a couple other things, but uh, sorry, I've been traveling, so this will be like the second time. It's a midweek drop, so I'm throwing everybody's rhythms off, mine included. I can't wait to get back into a rhythm. One downside to traveling. Well, no, many downsides to traveling, but that's a big one. Um. So, anyways, uh, first off, shout out to the Bitbox O2 hardware wallet. Go to shiftcrypto.ch slash Bitcoin Made Simple and use the promo code Bitcoin Made Simple to get 5% off. And when you do that, you will get a device that does not have a secret backdoor to it, if you know what I mean, because there is a certain hardware device that has been revealed to have a secret backdoor to recover your Bitcoin. You know, it's all for your, your help. Nobody would ever nefariously jump in and take your Bitcoin, would they? So that and, uh, oh yeah, upstream data, go to upstreamdata.ca and get your mining equipment there. You can get mining servers, as Bob Burnett told me to call them, because an ASIC is just the chip within any computer. Um, so uh, go to upstreamdata.ca, and then you can also get the black box. And it makes your Bitcoin mining very quiet. It makes your spouse or family members very, very happy. Then finally, Movies Plus. We'll get into that, but a lot of people use the promo code Corey. Kind of blows me away. Um, so yeah, use promo code Corey. And see whatever, what you're missing out on. Everyone else is joining. We're over a million downloads. Yeah, 1 million downloads uh, for the Austin Powers fans out there, um, which is kind of crazy to me, like really crazy. Um, but yeah, go to mymoviesplus.com. Um, and if you had checked this out for Q Sent Me, I know episode one came out in November and we're waiting on episode two and three. But I don't know if you know this, there's been a lot of developments and things that are getting filmed and added into the subsequent episodes. So something may or may not be happening today um, with uh, interviews. So just, uh, yeah, keep that uh, on your radar. And then uh, we also have the documentary, or we have a short with uh, Sneeko called Dust. And we're announcing some pretty big partnerships. I mean, big, big I'm very excited about it. Uh, it should bode well for the platform and for freedom of speech and all of the above. I'll try to lean away every time I sniffle. I ate lunch and just started sneezing like crazy, uh, which is something that happens sometimes when I eat. No, I'm not allergic to anything. Uh, it just happens. My sister thinks that there is a nerve. Well, she learned in college there's a nerve on the outside of your stomach that is connected to your I don't know, sneezing mechanism and so yeah I, she thinks that that's what it is i don't know it just happens maybe we have a sensitive one so anyways i was sneezing like crazy and now right i noticed right before i start po the podcast my nose is running and sure you're probably sitting there thinking well like it's a podcast why don't you just stop and start all over again, but I bring it raw. I bring it live. Well, live recorded, then uploaded. <laughs> um, anyways, um, first and foremost, the Bitcoin conference. Uh, there has been a ton of noise in the Bitcoin conference. Like, I thought, oh, like, I don't know. I, I barely go on social media. So I apologize. This happens a lot, but someone will 
DM me and a very significant amount of time can go by before I even respond. Um, so I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, I just I hate social media in general. That's why I haven't gotten real big into Noster because I could care less to join another social media network. It's just not in my wheelhouse of things to care about. So, um, but anyways, there's been a lot of chatter I've noticed in my brief moments on the bird app and the chatter is really weird. Um, reminds me a little bit of high school. Um, people mad at other people and people accusing other people of certain things. And I, I, I just, I just don't care. Um, I don't, I don't care. And um, I'll get into that. Why? And I think there's a lot of you that are like me, met most people. Um, but yeah, there's the thing. First of all, I didn't care for at all. In fact, I thought it was really irresponsible to have Udi and Eric, I think his name is. I don't even pay attention to these clowns because I just don't care. I think his name's Eric. Um, anyways, they wore wizard outfits and were on stage, which why were they given a stage? I know. Well, like, oh, you have a freedom of speech platform. You're supposed to support all ideas. Yeah, this is the Bitcoin conference. And yes, you need to be open to new ideas, maybe in like an open forum side stage. Maybe that's the best place for it. Not on the main stage where you have, let's face it, a lot of people that are coming to the Bitcoin conference have never, well, not never, but not been exposed to Bitcoin a bunch. And that's a really bad impression to leave them with, especially they did it right after RFK. That being said, um, I just, you know, I care so little that I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, they, they want to do what they want to do. That's fine. Bitcoin will keep moving on and we'll be fine without, with or without wizards on stages claiming they destroyed Bitcoin or broke Bitcoin, whatever they said. Which brings me to my next point is that I don't even really know what they said because I was at the conference the entire time and I did not watch one talk. Now, in defense of the conference, I was busy. <laughs> um, but no, I, I was at uh, to me, the, the important thing about the conference is the, the, well, I guess the value, not important, but the value in the conference is getting together with the people that we see online and we talk about Bitcoin with and everything like that and having like a chance to have like a, a form of physical community, you know, in, uh, you know, things such as like dinners and whatnot, instead of everything being a podcast or a Twitter space or, you know, this or that. So, yeah, I, I obviously think there's much value in that. Um, but Pierre Corbin and I were filming two documentaries at the same time. So he's got his documentary, the fight for the U S dollar. And I've got mine called Searching for Satoshi. And we basically were working with each other to, he's helping me produce mine. I'm helping him produce his. Um, we were, you know, sharing equipment and all that kind of stuff. But we ended up, so in the press, press area, I don't want you to go thinking I went and dropped money on a, on a whale pass uh, because no, I, I, um, I got a press pass and was documenting things. I'm going to release some stuff uh, shortly to show like for the conference. Uh, Cause I, I got a lot of good feedback from people that were, it was like asking people what they liked about the conference and stuff like that. Um, but the, um, I lost my train of thought because a car drove down my road and that never happens. And it, distracted and here i am with my adhd trying to get back on track oh so so yeah we were like uh 
slammed the entire time. In fact, I got very little B-roll footage, which is what I wanted to get. I wanted to, thought I'd have plenty of time to get more. Um, but we were fit, like we were interviews, shuttling people in and out, you know, one after another. Um, and I didn't even get to interview near everyone I wanted to interview. Um, you know, or, or like, I mean, you, you just, the re- the reason you do interviews at the conference for a documentary is that it's like a shotgun opportunity. You just get a bunch of them all at the same time. Um, but inevitably there will be some, you know, traveling around that you have to do and, and you want that, you know, like when you're watching a documentary, you don't want it to just be a bunch of people sitting in the relatively same place, you know? Um, so, and there's more story outside of, I mean, there's just so much more meat out there and I'll get into what I'm going to do with the documentary, but, um, yeah, it was, uh, we were working on those. We we're filming a bunch, got the, I mean, people that I knew prior to this that I got to see, which was nice was I got to see, um, Daniel Prince. I got to hang out for a bit with, um, Preston and catch up with him, my fellow Pittsburgher, uh, so I'm wearing a Steeler shirt today. Of course, that's what Pittsburgher wouldn't be wearing a Steeler shirt on a random day. Um, but uh yeah like you have to move on the fly at the bitcoin conference or at any conference and especially when you're doing like a big gathering and you're getting interviews so most of the interviews i got to do like a sit down not nearly the amount of time that we'd really want for a documentary interview but i got a meat uh, a good chunk of the meat that i wanted um and then uh you know like like for example preston was on the main he was on the panel on the um, not the main stage but the the news desk type thing they had set up and uh and he was like we were chatting there and he was like he was like hey i've got like you know five minutes because we were set up just next to it i was like i was like are you able to do an interview after this he was like i got like five minutes you know so it was like quick hitter boom you know um and as the story develops, I mean, same with other people I interviewed. As I get into the editing process and start putting things together, um, you know, there might be, I mean, you see this in documentaries all the time. There might be interviewees that you go back and, you know, touch base with again and uh, and get, you know, some more information, get some more thoughts from them. Um, but uh, we... So anyways, uh, yeah, that's what the the conference was like for me was we had a really nice setup. We had like a nice wide open area with nothing around. So we were able to change the background a little bit, you know, tweak it. And, uh, and, but yeah, that was like, but at the end of the conference, I was like, oh my God, I spent literally all my time here between that and going back and forth and, you know, getting very minuscule B-roll the last day of the conference, I didn't even eat a bite of food until like four o'clock when I realized, Oh, I have not eaten a bite of food. And like Pierre was doing an interview and I was like, once we got the interview rolling and the lights were set up, I was like, all right, you good. I gotta, I gotta go eat or I'm going to pass out. Tell you what I wasn't thrilled about was the fact that when you eat inside the conference, it's $47 for a burger and cheese. I'm kidding. It was thirty-seven dollars. Thirty-seven dollars for a burger. There was surcharges among certain charges, and I get it. People got to make a profit, so you know it is what it is. I hate that saying. I say it a lot, but I still hate it. But it is in this scenario what it is. It's a for-profit business model, and you are trapped in the conference, and there's not really any good food options right outside the Miami conference center. I am really eager to see what it's like at Nashville. It's going to be much different at Nashville. Uh, I think I'll be excited. I think my wife might actually finally come and here's a, I have a car on my street again. And I'll be honest, that bothers me because I live somewhere where 
cars on streets don't really happen. I mean, they're like right next to my property. And I see something. I'm giving you play by play here. And what's happening? Sitting in there. Okay. Yep. Drive along. Drive along. Keep going. Keep going. You are looking at my house, and that really bothers me. Keep going. Get out of here. Ugh. God. Bitcoin did this to me. That's the way I am now. I live in the boonies. I'm away from everything. And I want nothing to do with people being around. <laughs> I mean, I want people around, but uh, I that just the stuff like that. It's weird to be in that scenario now where I'm like, who are you? And get the hell out of here. Um, as opposed to, you know, a year and a half ago where I lived somewhere where it was by a mall. Uh, like in the city cars everywhere so anyways um yeah i it, it was a busy conference um for me uh there was definitely there was half as many people there this year um and there was a lot of noise with the crap like udi and other things like that um they just were stupid annoying like stupid annoying um and yeah, I, I don't really have respect for like things Udi's doing. I mean, just like clout chasing and trying to like shit all over Bitcoin for clout and, you know, grow up. I mean, you could tell, you could tell this person had no friends and probably still has no friends, just people trying to gleam off of them. So yeah, it's just whatever. I'm over it. I really don't care. Uh, he's not going to affect Bitcoin in the long run. I mean, remember, they broke Bitcoin by making the mining fees with ordinals go up by a factor of like the, a, a multiplied a 2x the bl block reward. So that was really tough, guys. As a miner, I will tell you, I hated when all those fees were getting thrown on. Don't get me wrong. Long term, especially well, short term, you want long term there will be bigger fees as the main chain gets becomes more of like a you know central bank type thing like an uncontrolled central bank or a decentralized central bank that you know only large transactions to move sums from one to another with you know decent sized fees go through um that's what i think will happen but uh yeah i mean so somebody that wanted to send bitcoin you know their transaction was getting backed up and they had to pay fees i didn't even check what the fees are because um you know other than the miner sending uh bitcoin off uh to my wallet i'm not on an exchange trying to buy it and sell it so um that was very interesting um that they were claiming they killed it whenever they were just like padding the wallets or the bitcoin wallets of the miners um so nice try way to go you succeeded at nothing and we're already the fees are already back down to normal uh pretty much normal there's still a backlog of transactions in the mempool but it'll clear uh it will clear in time and then we'll be back to like wow look at all that block space we have but yeah it was just absurd um and i'm like you know, all this, like, you know, because then Foss goes on and he's ranting about it and then he's fighting with people online and, you know, dropping bombs left and right. And I'm like, I mean, I don't, like, come on. Really? Like, this just, this needs to stop for people's mental, for their own mental health. It doesn't need to stop for Bitcoin because Bitcoin will be fine with it, regardless of how the, you know, Bitcoin Twitter community react interacts with each other but i do feel bad for people's mental health it's like to be that wrapped up into it um it can't be good um so anyways but to get to the meat of the documentary you know i, I first had the idea for this documentary back in 2019 and 
to be honest, at the beginning, I really did want to know who Satoshi was. Um, but the like, as I got to the more and more I learned about Bitcoin, and the further down the rabbit hole I went, I realized that I was like, I don't want to know who Satoshi is. I don't. I don't want to know who Satoshi is. What I did want to know was what made Satoshi who they were. Um, you know, who influenced them? What was the collection of ideas that they fed off of? Who laid the groundwork for Satoshi to do what they did? And what were the laws of nature? You know, what was going on in the political sphere, the economic forces that produced this creation of Bitcoin? What was all that? Um, so yeah, this started out as a search for the identity of Satoshi, but it's become something completely else. It's 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 become something completely different. And I'll I, I'll be honest, I got a lot of pushback. Uh, for example, Saifedean blew past the answer and said, "We're not talking about that." So. I mean, I had explained to him the spirit of the documentary, but I guess he really didn't want to talk about that. Um, whatever. So, I uh, yeah, the, the documentary originally was supposed to be about who Satoshi is. And then I was like, like everyone else, like most people. <laughs> I kept digging and digging and I was like, you know what? I really don't want to know who Satoshi is. I hope I don't find out. Um, so it's become a journey. And I think that journey is, you know, just begun. And this journey has a long way to go. Um, but, uh, you know, the curiosity of who is the creator of Bitcoin has fundamentally changed my views on money, on time, and on our place in this world, um, and so much more. So, you know, I, I can't thank Satoshi enough. And, you know, on this journey, I mean, I'm probably going to, this is going to take me all over the world. You know, I said I did some interviews already down in Miami. And... It's going to take me to more places because I already, I already have people in the UK. I've got probably a uh, handful other places I got to go to and keep adding to my trips. And and I don't know how this documentary is going to end. I just, I I don't know where this journey is going to lead. I, I just, you know, where is my search for Satoshi going to take me? And I really hope it's not to who Satoshi is. <laughs> that just sounds ridiculous. But to me, it's like I said, it's more fascinating to study what created Satoshi, what brought Satoshi to life. Because um, whatever brought Satoshi to life, meaning whatever brought the pseudonym to life, also brought the, the, the creation of Bitcoin. And, you know, so... To me, it's like, this is a perfect timing. It's like, I didn't get into Bitcoin to get rich. I didn't get into Bitcoin to, well, I'm not going to lie. Initially, initially I wanted to, I wanted to buy Bitcoin and for it to go up to infinity. I guess a better way to phrase it. Let me change that. I'm not currently in Bitcoin to get rich. I'm not in Bitcoin to get rich. I didn't get into Bitcoin for the memes. I'm not into Bitcoin because of the memes. I'm not into Bitcoin because of the social media drama. I'm not into Bitcoin for any other reason than the core reason. Um, and I still don't fully understand what the core reason is. But that's why I'm searching. So yes, the title of the documentary is Searching for Satoshi. And like I said, I don't know what I'll find on my search for Satoshi, but I really hope it's not the name of, you know, I really, really hope it's not the name behind Satoshi's pseudonym. Um, and I don't think I'll find it, but I don't know. I don't know what I'll find. 
I hope what I find is a deeper understanding of this amazing technology that can bring fair, free, and open markets to the world. Um, and, you know, like a lot of people will talk about who's Satoshi and they, they want to talk about like the, the the buzzwords and stuff, but I'm, I'm doing my best to dig deep and like, I want to know, like talk about the cypherpunks and then go a layer deeper, you know, what inspired the cypherpunks? Um, so this goes way beyond a documentary of just me sitting there. I mean, honestly, the first iteration of it was like, I'll just sit there and interview everyone and be like, who do you think Satoshi is? And they'll be like, um, it might be Hal Finney. It might be this person. It might be this person. And they'll be like, huh, that is really interesting. I'll follow up on that. Um, that's like definitely how this started in the hopes that like somehow that was going to get me the answer. Um, but yeah, who is Satoshi? What made them do what they did? And that is such a deep rabbit hole. Not, you know, going past, you know, oh, maybe it's Hal Finney or, oh, maybe it's so-and-so. Going way past that and figuring out what spurred the creation of Bitcoin. What was the catalyst that led to this? What was the catalyst, you know, what the cypherpunks led to the you know bitcoin and all the iterations that came before it what was the catalyst for the cypherpunks what was the catalyst for the catalyst of the cypherpunks um i just think it's a lot to unpack and you know satoshi by all means is not a all-knowing entity that is the be-all end all of bitcoin and whatever satoshi says goes because satoshi come back and be like hey i like ethereum and everyone in bitcoin would be like Oh, uh, thanks for your invention, dude. But see ya. Um, you know, oh, the market might drop twenty percent for a couple days. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's kind of like one of I think Bob Burnett said in one of the interviews for the documentary. I think it was for the documentary. He said, you know, it's like the inventor of the wheel. If the inventor of the wheel revealed themselves and said, like, hey, I think it'd be better if we used square wheels instead. We'd be like, thank you so much for your invention. We really appreciate it. Now, we're not going to use your new one. <laughs> we're not going to follow your new one. You had a great idea. Your follow-up idea was not the best. And keep trying, bud. Um, so, yeah, that's that's just where I'm at um, with the documentary. And, uh, by the way, get a BitBox02 hardware wallet from Shift Crypto. Go to shiftcrypto.th slash Bitcoin Made Simple to get promo. Use the promo code Bitcoin Made Simple to get 5% off. Ugh, got that all out. Um, yeah, so the docu the documentary, don't get confused. It's not... It's it's about so much more than... What was the name of the person that uh, created Bitcoin? Um, and like you, I don't think we'll ever find out. I think that's out of our control. I don't want to find out. And yeah, I, I just don't think we will. And that's a great, great thing because it's a, it would be an unnecessary distraction. Bitcoin doesn't need it. So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, on top of that, uh, yeah, I don't know. Movies Plus, we've got a big partnership coming, so uh, could be life changing. Met a lot of great people down there. Um, you know, a lot of new people that were just dipping their toes in, and um, yeah, I, I had a good time. So, all in all, good job, Bitcoin Magazine. I enjoyed myself, although I didn't get to watch any of the stuff on the stage. But again, honestly, to me, it feels like it would have been stuff that I had already heard, anyways. So, yeah, uh, until the next time, guys, you should definitely get another Bitbox02 hardware wallet and move your coins off the exchange. And I will talk to you guys later.